It's time to talk professional wrestling on Kayfabe Commentary. My name is Eric Rupp, and today we are going to be talking about NWA Power Episode 13. And this episode, honestly, this may have been the best episode. If not the best, it was certainly in the top two or three. This was a fantastic episode of NWA Power. They just hit it out of the park with this one again. Now, this one opened up with Tim Storm, and he gives yet another great, classy promo, you know, showing why he is a great representative of the NWA. And he is going over how the television title was the workhorse uh, title for the NWA, and a lot of great wrestlers have carried it, and how he would be very proud to carry that title and represent the company as its television champion. Now, as Tim was going over how the fans basically got cheated out of the match they deserved the previous week between Nick Aldis and Tim Storm, because Nick Aldis backed out, Tim was making it clear that he was disappointed for the fans because the fans deserved that match. And then Camille came out, and Tim let her know what he really thought. And he was honest and straightforward. He wasn't insulting. And then she slaps him hard. And he restrained himself, showing the kind of class that he has. And she thought it, clearly she thought it was funny. So what we've got there is a contrast in styles, a contrast in personal character. And it's a shame that Camille's come to this because clearly she's also kind of fallen under the influence of of Thomas Latimer, who has no character. And hanging around with him and Nick Aldis as as his character has changed for the worse. So, yeah, obviously, you you know, you're going to pick up on the characteristics and traits of the people you're around, and she's kind of been hanging out with a bad crowd. So with that out of the way, we got back to the television title tournament And the last draw and and something that also that uh, Tim Storm brought out is there are going to be two open slots given to people who could either be NWA legends, people from other promotions, people from independent promotions. You don't know who the last two slots are going to be. They're going to be surprises. Tim's excited about that. And I am, too. That really is an interesting idea that you don't know who's going to be in there in those last two spots. So that's going to be interesting. But what's going to be more interesting is one of the matches in the quarterfinals is Zane Dawson versus Dave Dawson. And they didn't quite know what to make of it when their names got drawn either because they have no idea what to, you know, what's this going to mean? Brother versus brother. Tag team partners going against each other. It's going to be really interesting to see how that works out. And that left the last two entrants into the tournament to go against each other. Trevor Murdoch against Thomas Latimer in a match that really should be one heck of a match. I mean, that's going to be one physical match. Should be a lot of fun to watch that one. And the first match of the show was part of the TV title tournament, and it featured Zicky Dice against Caleb Conley. And I got to tell you what, Caleb Conley, for a young kid who's coming up, he really showed well. He looked good in that match with Zicky Dice. Zicky Dice has been around a little longer, has a little more experience, and it showed as, as Dice did get the win. But I'll tell you what, Caleb Conley... This was a really good match, a really good match. It had a great pace. There was a lot of action. It was pretty hard hitting. Uh, Just a really good match overall. Now, Zicky Dice got the win, and he moves on in the tournament. But I'll tell you what, Caleb Conley looked really good. He's, He's got a lot of potential. He's got a lot of good wrestling fundamentals. He's very athletic, and he's got a ton of potential, and I can't wait to see what he does in the future. Now, after that came an interview with Aaron Shooter Stevens, and this was a really good interview with Joe Galley and Stevens, and one of the best with Stevens to date because Stevens seemed to be taking it a little more seriously. There's a little more gravitas to what he had to say, and it really worked well. He explained himself well and showed that he does take his title seriously as the national champion, well, as third-degree national champion, and so he really made his case why he and the question mark are going after all the belts. Belts, belts, belts. They want all the belts, and right now they've got a plan to get them, and we'll see if it works out. The one thing I have to wonder about, though, is Aaron Stevens ever going to learn how to pronounce karate? 
Well, one thing that we know that Thunder Rosa and ODB know how to do, and that's have a great match. That's what was up next. And I'll tell you what, this may have been the match of the show. This may literally have been the best match of the show, one of the best of the series since Power has been on. It was a really tough physical match. And it was Rose's speed and striking ability that made the difference. It was, it, let me tell you what, she came up against somebody bigger and stronger, but she held her own going toe-to-toe with ODB. And ODB, for her part, showed greater speed and agility than you would expect. So this was a great match. It, there, there were moments where there were great wrestling moves, moments where there were great striking moves, some high-flying stuff. You know, there was a lot of speed. It, it was everything. And... Multiple times they went toe-to-toe going back and forth. It was just a great match. It was fantastic from beginning to end. And ultimately, Thunder Rosa, she proved that she could use those MMA skills to compete with anyone. And she got the win over ODB in just a fantastic match. And this begs a question, too. Is she going to get a title shot at Allison K's Women's Championship? Because she clearly has earned it. She's clearly the number one contender. But Melina is holding her back. It's Melina that picked ODB as her opponent on this show when it was clear that Thunder Rosa wanted to go after Allison Kay's title. And if you ask me, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And this is no disrespect to Allison Kay, who is a great women's champion. But it's just a matter of when, not if, Thunder Rosa becomes the women's champion. The Nick Aldis comes out, and he looks surprised at all the boos coming his way. He seems genuinely surprised that the fans are not happy with him, or a large percentage of the fans are not happy with him. He doesn't seem to understand why that is. And he goes on to say how the actions of Camille are her own, and that he told the truth when he said she was no longer his insurance policy. Now, he explained that by saying because she's now a full-fledged member of Strictly Business. Now, that's splitting hairs. She's still part of his team. He's still the CEO of that team. So saying that he has nothing to do with that, that's a little disingenuous. From there, he starts bashing Tim Storm and Ricky Morton, saying that they're old and, and they've gone past the time that they should be wrestling, basically. And how he wants to make the newer wrestlers, such as Ricky Starks, who he has said he's going to have a match with, an exhibition match, with the TV time limit of 6.05, just like the TV tournament matches, because he wants to prove that he can get it done. Could he? No. He could not beat Ricky Starks in six minutes and five seconds. He absolutely could not beat him. He got him in the Kingsley and Cloverleaf, and Starks was in trouble, but the time ran out all the same, and that became a time limit draw. Now then, Ricky Morton comes out, and he says, hey, give him five more minutes, let's have a real winner. But Aldis declines that. Again, Aldis backs off of an opportunity to really prove himself, to prove that something, you know, he couldn't get the job done in six minutes and five seconds, but could he get it done in 11 minutes? And we'll never know because he turned that opportunity down. Then we get what's supposed to be a three-team tag match. Eli Drake and James Storm against Colt Cabana and Ken Anderson and the Wild Cards. But funny thing happened, the Wild Cards no-showed. They didn't show up. So it becomes a standard tag match. Drake and Storm against Cabana and Anderson. And this was a good match. Not a great match, but a good match. But Anderson, there's something wrong with that guy. He's really angry. And he tagged in Cabana from behind at one point, patting him on the back to get the tag and coming in when Cabana wasn't expecting it. Cabana was preparing a move. Anderson tagged him from behind and then came in and started doing his thing. Then later on, Anderson grabbed a referee when he didn't like a slow count. And he got disqualified. Cabana clearly was unhappy with Anderson. Very frustrated. And Anderson just looked incensed. He looked really angry. Like he suddenly got anger management issues after not being able to beat Eli Drake in the two matches he faced him in. It will be interesting to see what happens from here. But are there cracks in the team of Cabana and Anderson? 
And then as Joe Galley and Stu Bennett thought the show was ending, Nick Aldis and Strictly Business came out to the podium. And Nick Aldis called out the Rock and Roll Express. Now, this was interesting. We weren't quite sure what it was all about. But Nick Aldis challenged for a six-man tag team match, giving Ricky Morton a title shot if his team can beat Aldis's team. Now, of course, Ricky Morton's all for that. He figures, you know, he, Robert Gibson, and a third, you know, person on their team can take on Aldis and the wild cards. Then Aldis threw the monkey wrench in the works. He said, no, I'm not going to wrestle, and Ricky, you're not going to wrestle because I don't want you to have any excuses when you lose our singles match if it gets that far. So it would be Robert Gibson and two other partners that they'll have to find against the wild cards and their third man. At which point, Nick Aldis brought out their third man. And it's one of the most legendary tag team wrestlers ever. We're talking about Big Papa Pump, Scott Steiner. Scott Steiner is the third man on Nick Aldis' team as they're going to face the Rock and Roll Express. Well, Robert Gibson and whoever else they can find. So this could be really interesting to see if Gibson and his partners can beat the wild cards and Scott Steiner. You'd think that that really is not possible. I mean, the wild cards on their own, they're tough. And the Rock and Roll Express, they found a way to beat them, but with Scott Steiner in there as well? I mean, Scott Steiner is still a physical freak. This guy is big, he's strong, and he comes from a great tag team background. I mean, the Steiner brothers are arguably the greatest tag team of all time. Certainly top 10, absolutely. I mean, I would definitely say top three for sure, but there's no question. Scott Steiner is a great tag team wrestler, and this is going to be one tough challenge for Robert Gibson and his partners. (laughs) 